Dinosaur fossils have fascinated folks for generations, and understandably so. They provide insight into the lives, habits, and deaths of those remarkable reptiles. Since Sir Richard Owen named these creatures dinosaurs, they've entrenched themselves in humanity's collective mind. According to evolutionary scientists, dinosaurs lived somewhere between 66 and 245 million years ago. Sure. They determine these ages by looking at the layers in which the fossils are found, and since uniformitarian thinking dominates the scientific community, they assume that these layers have been laid down over vast stretches of time. But in the past couple of decades, new research has forced further conversation around the age of dinosaur fossils. As evolutionists try to explain away this new evidence or force it into their paradigm, more and more information comes to light that provides a massive stumbling block to long age ideas. Are you curious? Yeah. yeah! Let's find out more on today's episode of Creation Connection. Welcome to Creation Connection. I'm Trey. Before we begin, here's your friendly reminder to like, subscribe, and ring the bell. All right, let's get started. The discovery of fossils is nothing new. Around 300 BC, the Chinese scholar Cheng Chu wrote about dragon bones found in what is now Sichuan Province, China. Since Sir Richard Owen hadn't given these creatures the name hey, dinosaur I'm yet, dragons seemed to fit. Robert Plot holds the distinction of drawing and describing the first modern description of a dinosaur bone in scientific literature centuries ago in 1677. Granted, he thought it belonged to an elephant. It is mine! But scientists now believe the specimen was part of the femur of a <laughs> megalosaurus. No. It is mine. Nearly a century and a half later, the Reverend William Buckland obtained teeth and a jaw fragment in England and used them to develop and name the first dinosaur, the Megalosaurus. And since that time, the discovery of dinosaur bones and fossils of all kinds has grown exponentially. Dinosaur bone is made of soft, elastic protein fibers known as collagen. The bone is hardened by the mineral calcium phosphate, during the fossilization process, inorganic minerals from groundwater percolation replace the softer bone parts. Kaboom! Are my eyes deceiving me? We now have a museum-ready dinosaur fossil. Because most modern scientists hold the evolutionary theory and believe that the Earth is several billion years old, they assume that these fossils are old. They expect that any of the soft tissue that would have been present in the dinosaur when it was alive has long since been replaced by inorganic material during the fossilization process. But a simple accident shocked the scientific world <laughs> with a startling new discovery. One Dr. Mary Schweitzer, a paleontologist, intended to dissolve some bone and mineral material from the center of a T-Rex leg bone that was broken during extraction. She accidentally dissolved away all the hard parts. I mean, we all make mistakes, right? Yet something remained, a flexible material that looked just like soft tissue, collagen, blood vessels, and even red blood cells. Talk about a discovery. In later interviews, she recalled, I looked at this and I looked at this and I thought, this can't be. Red blood cells don't preserve. And she's right, they don't. At least not for millions of years. Artificial decay studies show that collagen cannot last longer than 900,000 years under even the most ideal conditions. The rest of the pieces she found likely have an even shorter lifespan. Dr. Schweitzer published the results of her accidental experiment in 2005, and critics soon attacked her for it. 
They looked at the decay rates and argued that it was impossible for collagen to have lasted for millions of years. It had to have been some sort of mistake. The rock layer in which the T-Rex bone was found was supposedly 68 million years old, and collagen and soft tissues just can't survive that long. Unacceptable, the critics said, so they did more research. But the studies that followed only confirmed Schweitzer's original find. The dinosaur soft tissue was, in fact, real. Since that first find, the number of soft tissue reports in dinosaur fossils grew. Scores of papers have reported original organic material in all kinds of fossils. This has uniformitarian scientists scratching their heads as they try to explain just what could cause these soft tissues to survive for so long. But it's not just dinosaur bones. Original soft tissue has been found in a number of different fossils, some that are supposed to be over 500 million years old. Turtles, feathers, blood proteins, chitin? Dr. Schweitzer's unintentional breakthrough started an avalanche of discoveries. Preserved dinosaur soft tissue, or soft tissue in general, is no longer unusual. And these finds come from all over the world. Scientists have made soft tissue finds in the United States, Canada, Argentina, Brazil, England, Germany, Spain, Madagascar, and China. These unusual discoveries prove to be problematic for those who hold to evolutionary ideas. Dr. Brian Thomas is an expert on this particular topic. Let's hear what he has to say about this. I started collecting technical journal articles that describe what I call original biomaterials. Let's see, 2013, I had found 40 different papers, and now it's up to 120. Well, there's one famous paper, 2005, in the journal Science, T-Rex blood vessels. That just caused a huge firestorm among paleontologists who are convinced that, A, this T-Rex was buried 70 million years ago, and B, the decay rates show that you know, blood vessels can't last even one million years. So the scientists on one camp are like, we are looking at blood vessels and the other, no, you can't be, because it can't last that long. But that's just one study. So the, so the doubters came and said, prove it to us. You, you, you need to find it somewhere else and use a different technique. So they did. And, they, and not just their team, but dozens of teams from around the world have been looking at hundreds of fossils from around the world. And it's not just dinosaurs. And they're describing now proteins and even DNA in all kinds of fossils from a creation perspective. If the flood formed these fossils, then these fossils formed only thousands of years ago. And yes, you could still expect to see some tissues. They're still in there. It's just stunning. So we have these bones and they're supposed to be millions of years old, but Contained within them are bits of soft tissue that experiments show cannot last that long. Logic dictates that either these soft tissues cannot be real, or that scientists are mistaken about the claimed age of these bones. But tests continually confirm that the soft tissues are real. Is the scientific community just going to ignore the evidence? Probs. Well, kind of. They can't disregard it completely. The issue has become too big. Secular scientists have come up with a couple of explanations, but neither one stands up to scrutiny. The first explanation claims that the soft tissues are actually bacterial secretions called biofilms. First published in 2008, this idea has been reasonably refuted. In particular, scientists successfully sequenced the dinosaur proteins. Through this, they identified amino acids and confirmed that the material was authentic collagen. And bacteria don't make collagen, or even its chemical building blocks. The second involves a 2013 report that makes the claim that chemical reactions involving iron and hydroxyls can somehow preserve dinosaur fossils for millions of years. I'm gonna live forever! The experiment that was supposed to prove this? A purified blood puree was used to keep bird blood vessels from rotting for two years at room temperature but this was in an extremely controlled environment. How would the carefully calibrated laboratory conditions even occur in the natural world? They wouldn't. Duh. 
Beyond that, innumerable experiments actually show that hydroxyls in contact with soft tissues tend to destroy soft tissues much more often than preserving them. We need to test this idea with artificial decay experiments. One such experiment actually showed that iron decayed bone faster than just water. Claims of iron preservation are premature at best. So where does that leave us? The evidence disagrees with the story told by evolutionary scientists. Despite their best efforts, they just can't explain the persistence of real original soft tissues inside dinosaur bones for millions of years. The increasing number of soft tissue finds has forced the scientific community to look at the evidence again. The existence of these soft tissues threatens the deep time assumption that the entire evolutionary theory relies on. However, these finds make sense in a biblical timescale. If the Earth is young, and the dinosaurs these fossils belong to died during the global flood just a few thousand years ago, then the existence of soft tissues isn't only reasonable, but expected. On top of that, the flood better explains fossilization in general. When what we can clearly see challenges the preconceived dogma, perhaps it's time to reconsider. Right, Dr. Thomas? So the presence of these biomaterials, these short-lived DNA and proteins inside fossils, how can that still be there if it's millions of years old? But it has to be millions of years old, right? And that's where we can start to think biblically. If these fossils formed in the flood, then we, we, we have sort of an answer. It gives us a good question to ask our friends. They may well come up with some explanation, and that's fine. You know, because we cling to our beliefs despite evidence against it. Just like the Pharisees, they clung to their belief that Jesus was a heretic, despite the fact that he proved uh, through various miracles that he was God himself. But they, they, they just ignored all the evidence, and we do the same thing as people today, ignoring the evidence. So for a few of those Pharisees, they did believe. And for a few of those folks who we come in contact with, this may be sort of the question we can ask. We have to, you know, we have to let each person come to their own conclusion about what they're gonna believe about how do you have blood vessels in dinosaur bones. We know from Genesis 1 that dinosaurs were created on day six of the creation week. They didn't evolve over long spans of time millions of years ago. And the evidence continues to confirm that. Thanks for watching Creation Connection. New episodes come out on Wednesdays. If you're interested in further reading, check out Dr. Thomas's book, Ancient and Fossil Bone Collagen Remnants. Make sure to like, subscribe, and share. And we'll see you next time on Creation Connection.